Thanks for dropping in on the Mountain West Network studio where we're once again getting primed for Mountain West football. Week one is now upon us, and we brought in our football analyst, Ted Sunquist to break down week one of the West Division. Six games to talk about. We're going to start with the first one out of the box, San Jose State hosting North Dakota Thursday, 7 o'clock Pacific time, be televised by ESPN3. In Spartan country, David Fales, now gone, the school's all-time leading passer. Who has to pick up the slack offensively to at least minimize the damage that has been done with David Fales now in the NFL? Great question, Jesse. And I don't think that we should expect Blake Jurich or Joe Gray to come in right away and recreate David Fales' storied career at San Jose State. Rather, look at the five of the Spartans' top seven receivers in 2013 were freshmen. Look at that and see their second-year jump as vital to the continued offensive production in 2014. That means running precise routes, coming back to the ball, consistency with their hands, and finding yards after the catch. I think with the senior fails last season, the offensive staff was a bit more pass-first, run-second focused. San Jose State averaged less than four yards a carry, was 10th in total rushing attempts in the Mountain West. A more balanced attack behind second-year running back Gerard Lawson should help open things up. The growth and maturity of all those young skilled position players forced into action last season, I think, will determine how far Ron Carragher's Spartans improve over last year's six and six, six and six record. You mentioned loss and they're running back unavailable for the first two games. He will not be with the team, but Tyler Winston, one of those young guys, the receivers, is the reigning Mountain West freshman of the year. Again, Spartans and the Sioux will kick things off at 7 o'clock Pacific time on Thursday. ESPN3 will have your coverage. UNLV at Arizona. This is a Friday night game, 7.30 Pacific time, televised by ESPN. What a wonderful season in Las Vegas for Bobby Houck and company last season. They go to a bowl game. Got everyone excited once right. again about Rebel football. Can they make it a second straight year of playing in the holidays? Well, Bobby Houck has been all about building a winning culture in the Rebel program since he arrived from Montana four seasons ago. He got the message out right away, but it took a little while to get it absorbed into the program. I had a chance to see the Rebels last season, and it was evident that they'd learned to fight an opponent for 60 minutes. There's enough talent in that program to hang with anyone in the Mountain West. The players just needed to learn that. It was, senior, it was the senior leadership of both quarterback Caleb Herring and running back Tim Cornette that I think finally got that across to the rest of the squad. And whether Nick Sherry or transfer Blake Decker, one of those two needs to pick it up where Herring left it off as leader in the huddle. They've got one of the top receivers in the country and Devontae Davis to throw to and a defense that improved marketedly under Bobby's brother, defensive coordinator Tim Houck in 2013. UNLV and the Cats from Arizona will take the field at 7.30 Pacific time on Friday. For what it's worth, the Rebels all-time 6-1-1 one one on Fridays uh, in their career. So we'll see if they can make it a seventh win this coming Friday. Moving on to Southern Utah at Nevada. This is a noon Pacific kickoff. Mountain West Network will have your coverage. Nevada primed, I would think, to make a bounce back because it was a disappointing year last yes, year in Reno under Brian Pulley in his first year going 4-8. and eight. Are they primed and can they get back to a bowl game this year? Jesse, I think so. I don't see the Wolfpack going 0-6 on the road in 2014 and that really doomed their season last year where they lost four in a five-game losing skid. They also finished strong at home with an impressive win over San Jose State, who had just defeated then undefeated Fresno State, and they fought BYU in a close game to close out the season. Quarterback Cody Fajardo, one of the Mountain West's most accurate passers, is back on offense, as is running back Kendall Brock, who scored 10 touchdowns rushing in 2013. Richie Turner, Aaron Bradley at a tandem at wide receiver that accounted for a combined 100 receptions and 1,200 yards last season. Defense is where the improvement will be needed, especially versus the run, but head coach Brian Polian played a ton of freshmen and sophomores a year ago, and they should all be better, uh, all be better for it, stepping up in 2014 with that experience. Cody Fajardo, the quarterback for the Wolfpack, the only returning FBS player with 7,000 yards passing and 2,000 yards rushing. Southern Utah and Nevada will kick things off noon Pacific time on the Mountain West Network on Saturday. Moving on to Northern Arizona at San Diego State. This is a Saturday kickoff as well, 4 o'clock Pacific time. CBS Sports Network will have the television coverage. San Diego State loses Adam Moema. He's no longer in the backfield for them, but they do have some talent on offense. 
How is the ground game going to hold up? Because that's very important in, in Rocky Long's offensive system and what he likes to do. How is the ground game going to hold up without Adam Uwema, who was a bulldog for that program? Well, you know, we were saying the same thing two years ago when Ronnie Hillman left for the pros, and it all seemed the Aztecs had in the backfield was this returning freshman named Uwema. <laughs> well, this season, San Diego State's top rusher is gone again with only this, recruit, this returning freshman, Donald Pumphrey. 752 yards, over six yards of carry, and eight touchdowns. And like you said, head coach Rocky Long is going to want to run the football at you. And so it's really more about an attitude first and then someone stepping up in the position second. And that attitude starts up front with the offensive line that has plenty of starting experience and a bit of something to prove, I think, after an overall down year in 2013. Now, key for the Aztecs is getting off to a fast start as four of their first six games are on the road. This is where a strong running game can take some of the pressure off of both the passing attack and the defense against opponents like North Carolina, Oregon State, and Fresno State. Rest assured, it's one of the main reasons why so much emphasis has been placed on getting the consistency down in the offensive line and the rushing attack throughout preseason camp. No doubt will be an emotional day at San Diego State. Uh, at the stadium, they're going to be honoring the late Tony Gwynn at the pregame ceremony. Tony Jr. will serve as the honor warrior for that game. So no doubt an emotional return to Aztec football for, uh, for San Diego State. They will kick things off against Northern Arizona again Saturday, 4 o'clock Pacific time. CBS Sports Network has your coverage. Moving on to Fresno State at USC, one of those most hyped games that you look forward to in the Mountain West and really around the country. Saturday, 4.30 Pacific time, be televised by Fox. Fresno State opens up against USC, but then they take on Utah, then they take on Nebraska. I mean, you talk about an aggressive scheduling in Fresno for Tim DeRuiter and company. Really, this is a tough schedule for anyone, much less for a team that just lost its overall leader in a guy like Derek Carr. You have to use your schedule to recruit. And playing two teams from the Pac-12 and then a nationally known opponent like Nebraska, I think gives Tim DeRuiter's staff some leverage when they go out and compete against so many options in the state of California and the West. We saw Fresno State drop one game last season and fall immediately out of BCS Bowl game contention. So why not build your program with so much national attention in the last season around a trio of games that a lot of young athletes would love to be a part of? As challenging as the schedule appears to drop one or even all three of those games doesn't cripple the postseason chances, I think, of this senior class in 2014. This coming off a year where they lost record-setting quarterback Derek Carr to the NFL, like you mentioned. I like where the Bulldogs sit. As long as they can withstand the physicality of those opponents and come out healthy on the other side, I think they'll be the better team for it in the Mountain West as they get into that schedule. There's no doubt the dogs have looked forward to this game. They have a little payback that they'd like to uh, give USC after the Trojans trounced them in a bowl game last December. Again, the Bulldogs and Trojans will kick things off on Saturday, 4.30 Pacific time on Fox. Finally, the last West Division game to talk about, Washington at Hawaii, Saturday kickoff, 4.30 Hawaii time on CBS Sports Network. The Warriors last year didn't reach the level of success that I'm sure Norm Stroud would have liked. How do they continue to improve, win some more football games, and show that progress under Norm Chow here in 2014? Jesse, take back home field advantage. When U of H is at its best, it's usually when they dominate at home. Uh, the trip itself can wear out an opponent, not to mention the surroundings once they, once they get there. The three S's, sun, sand, and surf. <laughs> Most visitors are coming into the islands from a frigid reminder that winter is waiting when they return. Add on to that a fan base that can be downright intimidating when the Warriors are playing at their best. It really makes for a difficult trip. The past two seasons, Hawaii has been 4-8 at home with a 4-20 and overall record. In the prior two seasons, U of H was 10-5 and at home, 16-11 and overall. Part of playing well on the road is the confidence that comes from being at your best in front of your own fans and then learning how to take that confidence into your opponent's backyard. Four of their first six games are at Aloha Stadium, and this will be telling as to how far Hawaii improves as a team in 2014. Well, they certainly don't back down from a challenge early in the season. This is the third straight year Hawaii will be opening up with a nationally ranked opponent. This year it's Washington, Saturday, 4.30 Hawaii time, televised by CBS Sports Network. For Ted Sundquist, I'm Jesse Kurtz. Enjoy a great weekend of watching Mountain West football.